Hey everyone, in this Spring Boot interview question series, I am covering real, challenging and tricky questions. So let's get started. How to get the list of all the beans in your Spring Boot application? So first, I would auto-wire the application context into the class where I want to list the beans, as you can see in the code. Then I would use the get bean definition names method from the application context to get the list of beans. Now let's move to the different question. Describe a Spring Boot project where you significantly improve performance. What techniques did you use? So I improved a Spring Boot project's performance by optimizing database interactions with connection pooling and caching by using EH cache. I also enabled HTTP response compression and configured stateless sessions in Spring Security to reduce the data transfer and session overhead. I also significantly reduced response times by using Spring Boot's actuator for real-time monitoring and adopting asynchronous processing for non-critical tasks. I increased the application's ability to handle more concurrent users, enhancing overall efficiency. Let's move to the different question. Explain the concept of Spring Boot's embedded servlet containers. So basically Spring Boot has an embedded servlet container feature which essentially means it has a web server like Tomcat, Jetty or Undertow built right into the application. This allows us to run our web applications directly without setting up an external server. It's a big time saver for development and testing because we can just run our application from our development environment or through a simple command. This embedded approach simplifies deployment too as our application becomes a standalone package with everything need to run it and it will eliminate the need for separate web server configuration. Now let's move to the different question. How does Spring Boot make DI easier compared to traditional Spring? So basically Spring Boot makes dependency injection easier compared to traditional Spring by auto configuring beans and reducing the need for explicit configuration. In traditional Spring, we had to define beans and their dependencies in XML files or with annotations which can be complex for large applications. But in Spring Boot, we use auto configuration and component scanning to automatically discover and register beans based on the application's context and class path. This means now we don't have to manually wire up beans. Spring Boot intelligently figures out what's needed and configures it for us. This auto configuration feature simplifies application setup and development, allowing us to focus more on writing business logic rather than the boilerplate configuration code. Now let's move to the different question. How does Spring Boot simplify the management of application secrets and sensitive configurations, especially when deployed in different environments? So basically Spring Boot helps manage application secrets by allowing configuration to be externalized and kept separate from the code. This means I can use properties files, YAML files, environment variables and command line arguments to just adjust setting for different environments like development, testing and production. For sensitive data, Spring Boot can integrate with systems like Spring Cloud Config Server or HashiCorp Vault which securely stores and provide access to secrets. This setup simplifies managing sensitive configurations without hard coding them, enhancing security and flexibility across various deployment environments. Now let's move to the different question. Explain Spring Boot's approach to handle asynchronous operations. So basically Spring Boot uses the async annotation to handle asynchronous operations. This lets us run tasks in the background without waiting for them to be complete before moving on to the next line of the code. To make a method asynchronous, we just add async annotation above its definition and Spring take care of running it in a separate thread. This is handy for operations that are independent and can be run in a parallel like sending emails or processing files so the main flow of the applications doesn't get blocked. To work with async operations, we also need to enable it in configurations by adding enable async annotation to one of the configuration classes. Now let's move to the different question. How can you enable and use asynchronous methods in a Spring Boot application? To enable and use asynchronous method in a Spring Boot application, first I would add the enable async annotation to one of my configuration classes. This enables Spring's asynchronous method execution capabilities. Next, I would mark methods I want to run asynchronously with the async annotation. These methods can return void or future type if I want to track the result. Finally, I would call these methods like any other method. Spring take care of running them in a separate thread 
allowing the calling thread to proceed without waiting for the task to finish. Remember, for the async annotation to be effective, the method calls must be made from outside the class. If I call an asynchronous method from within the same class, it won't execute asynchronously due to the way Spring proxies work. Now let's move to the different question. Describe how you would secure sensitive data in a Spring Boot application that is accessed by multiple users with different roles. To keep sensitive information safe in a Spring Boot app used by many people with different roles, I would do a few things. First, I would make sure everyone who uses the app proves who they are through a login system. Then I would use a special setting to control what each person can see or do in the app based on their role like some can see more sensitive stuff while other can't. I would also scramble any secret information stored in an app or sent over the internet so that only the right people can understand it. Plus, I would keep passwords and other secrets keys out of the code and keep them in a safe place making them easy to change if needed. Lastly, I would keep track of who looks at or changes the sensitive information just to be extra safe. This way only the right people can get the sensitive data and it stay protected. Now let's move to the different question. You are creating an endpoint in a Spring Boot application that allow users to upload files. Explain how you would handle the file upload and where you would store the files. To handle file upload in a Spring Boot application, I would use post mapping annotation to create an endpoint that listen for post requests. Then I would add a method that accepts multi-part file as a parameter in the controller. This method would handle the incoming file. Now let's move to the different question. Can you explain the difference between authentication and authorization in Spring Security? In Spring Security, authentication is verifying who I am, like showing an ID. It checks my identity using methods like password or tokens. Authorization decides what I am allowed to do after I am identified like if I can access certain parts of an app, it's about permissions. So authentication is about confirming my identity and authorization is about my access rights based on that identity. Now let's move to the different question. After successful registration, your Spring Boot application needs to send a welcome mail to the user. Describe how would you send the emails to the registered users. First, I would ensure the Spring Boot starter mail dependency is in my project's form XML. Next in application.properties file, I would set up my mail server details like host, port, username and password. Then I would write a service class that uses Java mail sender to send emails. In this service, I craft the welcome email content and use the send method to dispatch emails. And finally, after a user successful registers, I would call my mail service from within the registration logic to send the welcome email. Now let's move to the different question. What is Spring Boot CLI and how to execute the Spring Boot project using Boot CLI? Spring Boot CLI is a tool for running Spring Boot application easily. It helps to avoid boilerplate code and configuration. To execute the Spring Boot project using Boot CLI, first install the CLI through a package manager or download it from the Spring website. Write the application code in a groovy script which allow using Spring Boot features without detailed configuration. In the terminal, navigate to the scripts directory and run spring myapp.groovy substituting myapp.groovy with the scripts file name. Now let's move to the different question. How is Spring Security implemented in a Spring Boot application? To add the Spring Security in a Spring Boot application, first we need to include a Spring Security starter dependency in the POM file. Then we create a configuration class extending web security configurer adapter to customize security settings such as specifying secured endpoints and configuring the login and logout process. We also implement the user detail service interface to load user information, usually from a database and use a password encoder like bcrypt password encoder for secure password storage. We can secure specific endpoints using annotation like pre-authorize based on roles or permission. This setup ensures that my Spring Boot application is secure, managing both authentication and authorization effectively. Now let's move to the different question. How to disable a specific auto configuration? To disable a specific auto configuration in a Spring Boot application, I use the exclude attribute of the Spring Boot application annotation. First, I find out which auto configuration class I want to disable. For example, let's say I want to disable the auto configuration class for data source. Then I update Spring Boot application annotation with exclude keyword as shown below in the code. Exclude is equal to data source auto configuration dot class. Now let's move to the different question. Explain the difference between cache eviction 
and cache expiration. Cache eviction is when data is removed from the cache to free up space based on a policy like least recently used. Cache expiration is when data is removed because it's too old based on a predetermined time to live. So eviction manages cache size while expiration ensures data freshness. Now let's move to the different question. If you had to scale a Spring Boot application to handle high traffic, what strategies would you use? To scale a Spring Boot application for high traffic, we can add more app instances like horizontal scaling and use a load balancer to spread out the traffic. Break up our application into microservices so each part can be scaled independently. Use cloud services that can automatically adjust resources based on our app's need. Use caching to store frequently accessed data, reducing the need to fetch it from the database every time. And then I can also implement an API gateway to handle requests and take care of things like authentication. Now let's move to the different question. Describe how to implement security in a microservices architecture using Spring Boot and Spring Security. To secure microservices with Spring Boot and Spring Security, we add the Spring Security to each microservices for authentication or authorization. Create a central authentication service that gives out tokens like JOT when users log in. Ensure each microservice checks these tokens to let only allowed users in. Use SSL TLS for secure communication. Implement an API gateway to manage security checks and route requests. In Spring Boot, how is session management configured and handled especially in distributed systems? In Spring Boot, for distributed systems, session management is done by storing session information in a shared location using Spring Session. This way, any server can access the session data, allowing users to stay logged in, in across different servers. We set it up by adding Spring Sessions to our project and choosing where to store the sessions like in a database or cache. This makes our application more scalable and keep user session consistent. Now let's move to the different question. Imagine you are designing a Spring Boot application that interfaces with multiple external APIs. How would you handle API rate limits and failures? To handle API rate limits and failures in a Spring Boot application, I would use a circuit breaker to manage failures implement rate limiting to avoid exceeding API limits, add a retry mechanism with exponential backup for temporary issues, use a caching to reduce the number of requests. This approach helps keep the application reliable and efficient. Now let's move to the different question. How would you manage externalized configuration and secure sensitive configuration properties in a microservice architecture? To handle these settings across microservices in a big project, I would use a tool called Spring Cloud Config it's like having a central folder where all settings are kept. This folder can be on the web or my computer. There's a special app called config server that gives out these settings to all the other small applications or microservices where they ask for it. If there are any secret settings like password, I would make sure they are scrambled up so no one can easily see them. This way all microservices can easily get updated settings they need to work right and the important stuff stay safe.